I know about numbers. One. One plus one equals two. Two plus one equals three. Two plus two equals four. Three plus two equals five. Plus two plus two equals six. That's three pairs of mittens. Four plus three equals seven. Seven plus one. Equals eight. Five plus four equals nine. Seven plus three equals ten. So you see, I know about numbers. Three plus one equals four. Seven plus three equals ten. Two plus three equals five. One equals three. One. That's very easy. Seven plus two equals nine. One plus one equals two. Two plus one plus one equals seven. That's a difficult sum. Now you can see I know lots more about numbers.
This is my brother. My brother has a sister. Me. Here are my mother and father. And grandpa and grandma. So you see, I can read. I can count. Dress myself. We are going to a party. This is my party dress. My brother wears blue shorts and a yellow sweater. He has striped socks. So have I. Now you see, I can dress myself. So can my brother. We both wear a coat with six buttons, and we both wear green boots. We like splashing in puddles. Granny made us each a knitted hat, a woolen scarf, and red mittens. Now we're dressed and ready to go. I can read. I can count. I can dress myself. To school. Miffy wore her bright red dress. Her friends came for her. The school was close to Miffy's house. It was a lovely place with lots of things to do. The teacher was waiting for the children at the door. Miffy liked her pretty dress and necklace. When the bell rang, the children sat down at their desks. Teacher started their lessons. First, the children drew some curly lines. This will help you to learn to write, said the teacher. 
Then the teacher drew two toadstools on the chalkboard, and underneath she drew three more. How many toadstools do you count? That's right, five, she said. Children learned a song. They stood and sang together, while the teacher clapped her hands in time to the music. Then they built a town with bright colored blocks. There were houses, churches, and a gateway. Look out! Don't knock them down. Soon it was time for the break. The children went outside to play. They ran and jumped and danced. Miffy had a lot of fun. After the break, the teacher said, "Let's do some drawing now." Miffy drew a tree and something round and blue. Was it the sun or perhaps a balloon? The teacher pinned the pictures on the wall. A castle, some boats, an airplane, a house, and trees. What a lot of things the children drew! Now I'll read a story," said the teacher. Miffy and the other children sat on the floor to listen. They loved story time. Soon it was time to go home. The teacher waved to Miffy and her friends. Goodbye, she said. I'll see you all tomorrow. Here comes Papi, my friend Papi, Happy Papi Pig. She's the one who always works so hard. Poppy Pig. Poppy Pig was small and plump. She had a round face, a little round nose, and two round eyes. Poppy lived in a little red house. It had a green roof and a window box full of bright yellow flowers. Poppy watered them every day. One morning, Poppy got up early and put on an apron. Outside, the sun was shining brightly, and Poppy had lots of things to do. It was time to clean the house. First, Poppy swept the floor. She liked to do that the best. Her broom went swish swish until every corner was clean. Next, Poppy dusted the furniture. She dusted tables and chairs, bookshelves and window ledges. She even dusted the big cupboard. Then Poppy cleaned her favorite picture. It was soon so bright and shiny that Poppy thought the flower looked almost as real as those in the window box. But now the dust cloth was dirty and needed a good wash. Poppy filled a bowl with soapy water. The soap suds made her sneeze. Achoo! <laughs> When the clean dust cloth was pinned on the clothesline to dry, Poppy said, "Now everything's done." 
what a busy day it's been. But all the spring cleaning had made Poppy very hungry. In her garden she had potatoes, apples, cabbages, and carrots. Which should she choose to eat? Of course, Poppy remembered that she had picked a bunch of carrots yesterday because they looked so good. Soon the carrots were ready and Poppy ate them happily. After her meal, Poppy washed her plate and fork. Then she sat down in her comfortable armchair. How lovely to have a clean house, thought Poppy Pig. And now I deserve a rest as well as those delicious carrots. Snuffy's Puppies Snuffy is a little brown dog. One day she is so quiet and still, her mistress thinks something is wrong. What is it, Snuffy? We'll take you to the vet. He will know what the matter is. The vet smiles. Snuffy is very well. Soon she will have some puppies. Everyone is very glad. Snuffy is very hungry. She has extra food to help her stay strong and healthy. Nine weeks later, in the middle of the night, what do you think happens? Start counting. One, two, three little brown puppies are born. They are so new, their eyes have not yet opened. But they are hungry already. Snuffy lies on her side to let her babies feed on her milk. Soon they can walk a little bit, but sometimes they bump and fall down. Their eyes are still closed. When they are three weeks old, they can open their eyes and see. Now they are ready to play. Snuffy has a lot to teach them. The little pups learn to go outside for certain things. The puppy 
monkeys have their own dishes, just like their mothers. They always lick their dishes clean and grow bigger each day. Snuffy likes to watch her little family. She thinks, "What fine puppies I have! The best ones in the world." One morning, Miffy woke up early. She took a bar of soap and her soft yellow sponge. She washed from top to toe. Then Miffy put on her best blue dress. It had white daisies on it. How smart she looked! Good morning, Miffy," said Mr. and Mrs. Rabbit. "Many happy returns of the day." Yes, it was Miffy's birthday. Miffy's bicycle. One sunny day, Miffy was daydreaming. When I'm grown up, she thought I'll have a bicycle of my own. I can go and see Auntie Alice. I'll cycle through fields full of beautiful flowers, red, blue, and yellow. House lived two rabbits. The house had red shutters. It stood in a garden. Mr. Rabbit liked gardening. He grew roses, tulips, and flowers. He weeded the flower beds and watered the flowers each day. Mrs. Rabbit cleaned the house and cooked Mr. Rabbit's dinner. Every day she went to the shops carrying a big basket. Miffy goes flying. Miffy was playing in the garden. All at once, she heard a loud buzzing in the sky. What could it be? Miffy looked up and saw a bright red airplane. Sitting in the cockpit was Miffy's uncle Bob. The plane came lower and lower, landed on the lawn. Miffy jumped up and down. "Hello, Uncle Bob!" she shouted. 
Hello, Miffy, said Uncle Bob. Would you like to come for a ride? I'll take you up and away past the woods and over the sea. Miffy at the Seaside The rabbit family lived close to the sea. One morning, Mr. Rabbit took Miffy to the beach. Miffy got up very early. She put on her striped beach dress. Look at me, she said. I'm going to the seaside. Get your bucket and spade and jump into the cart, said Mr. Rabbit. The sun was shining. Everything was white. Crisp snow lay on the ground and covered the red roofs. Wrap up warmly, said Mrs. Rabbit. Then you can play outside. Miffy put on her red cap, her woolen scarf and mittens, and her warm red boots. She ran out into the snow. Whoosh! Down the hill slid Miffy on her yellow sled, and whoosh! Off she tumbled, but she didn't mind. Why Miffy Cried When Miffy went to bed, she liked to have her little teddy bear in her arms. It made her feel pleasant and warm. But once, she woke up crying. Why? Her teddy bear was gone. Where could it be? She looked every I know what, thought Auntie Alice. I'll give a party. Of course I must ask my little niece Miffy, and Barbara and Boris Bear, and Poppy Pig and Posy, who are so nice. I'll write them each a letter, telling all about it. I'm sure they will all come. On the other side of the letter, I'll draw a map, so they will be sure to find the way. She hung colorful paper chains all over her house. 